Our next guest, oh, where are your wheels? We normally see you in four wheels in the in the taco truck. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Not today. It's great to see you again, you Patrick too. Harris. How are you? Welcome. Great uh, to be here. What are we going to be making here today, man? All right. So today we have our uh, guacamole and mocha hete. It's going to be a lava rock bowl where we actually um, make the paste authentically with uh, onion, cilantro, and salt blend with fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we cut up some fresh avocados and toss it. And we're also going to be doing a Hanover tomato taco. This is going to be uh, sherry, garlic, and basil marinated tomatoes. We make our own marinated mozzarella from scratch oh, in-house with wow. some brown butter sage croutons for a textural contrast. And we have a whole bunch of delicious sauces, uh, citrus remoulade being the all-star. With the Hanover tomato taco, this must be hitting a home run right now, especially in the season. Yeah, and people in Richmond, quite frankly, just love Hanover tomatoes. Uh, we've really taken the classic and just made it shine. It doesn't taste like anything other than a beautiful Hanover tomato. Let's get started here, Patrick. All right, absolutely. So with the Hanover tomatoes, this is just a little bit of sherry vinegar, garlic, some salt, and we take uh, basil and put that in the marinade um, and in the whole stems. So you get this really nice essence into the tomatoes. Two questions, what are we looking for in a tomato if we're gonna be making something like this or maybe a, a salad dish? With a Hanover tomato, mm -hmm. you really wanna look for the gnarliest, knotted, most ugly tomato you can find. You're kidding me. No, absolutely, and that's typically the most flavor, the juiciest, and the best you're gonna get. Is that so, why is. is that? Just a lot of stress on the vine? They're just, I, you know, they make it work? I don't know, I don't know the story behind mm -hmm. it. It's just the, the swan from the ugly duckling. Yeah, okay, it's, it's a, a great analogy. Story, yeah. So really dig through those and get those gnarly tomatoes. You won't, yeah. be, you won't be surprised. Yeah, be surprised. the more creases and the more little brown nooks and crannies, yeah. the better. Yeah. You've cut these tomatoes up. You said you marinated them. How far in advance do you like to marinate something? I like to get a nice 24-hour marinade on them just to let the flavors develop. Then we have some uh, mozzarella. We do this oh, in-house. Um, the mozzarella is marinated with uh, a whole bunch of Italian herbs and seasonings. Uh, really bright and fresh, but it's got garlic and some red pepper flake carrying it up the back. So this is something where you'd get your protein. Uh, yeah. With the yeah. mozzarella. Mm -hmm. uh, now, with our tacos, we always have a nice little Napa cabbage garnishing. Today, I'm doing this on flour tortillas. Typically, we would do soft corn tortillas. Mm -hmm. um, this is really just for the demo. Just, you know, flour tortillas are nice as well. Then we have these little delicious brown butter, sage soaked, salty, crispy croutons. That is a capital BB right there. That is brown butter because we. We, we snuck a couple of those yeah. croutons in before the segment. They are delicious. Yeah. How do we make croutons? So we literally just take a big pot of butter, cook it until it starts <laughs> to brown with sage leaves just embedded into it, frying until yeah. it's just absolutely delicious. That's it. And when it's all browned up, that's when we strain it out, and then we're ready to soak that into our bread, and we fry it up, and that's our oh, croutons. Oh, fry it up, and you just get this delicious crouton. Generous right salt, because you want that salty crunch. Yes, indeed. So we have a habanero lime vinaigrette, which is our signature sweet, um, sweet acid. I have a citrus remoulade that we're uh, putting on here. You like yeah. to sauce it up, though. We do. Boca is known for the sauce, boss of the sauce. Or, uh, this is a sweet boss soy drizzle. Sauce. I love it, man. <laughs> and then we got a uh, little bit of a sriracha mayo just to add a little bit of picante. Yeah, some people like uh, maybe to stay away from some spice like that. So you can heat it up or dial it back. Can't you? Exactly, yeah. And for, for us, if you ever try to make this at home, the real key is just having some like, you know, nice, sweet acidity mm -hmm. with some sort of um, a fatty aioli or something that's gonna really give you a little a cut against that. You know, so that's Patrick, your tacos. This is something that I would imagine some, that a person at home would like to choose to make because you're not really turning the oven on, turning the grill on. You can make this here, in, as we did, in about four minutes. And yeah. I know you're an expert, but really somebody can make this in less than 30 minutes. Absolutely, yeah, bright and summery. Yep. Uh, do we want to make some uh, guacamole here? Yeah, we have a guacamole and mocha hete on our new menus at the, at the two restaurants, Boca Grill and the Boca Taco Bar. And we're going to be um, doing an authentic mocha hete style where we take some onions and we put it into the lava rock bowl with jalapeno. You can already smell that okay. We take some cilantro. Mm -hmm. I notice you're just sort of throwing it in, not really measuring it to a T. Well, I've got the measurements down pretty well. It's, it's uh, all up here. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we use demi-toss spoons, the little uh, spoons as our measuring tools. So then you would take a mortar and we would mash this until it becomes a paste. Now, I've already How made... How long typically would you 
this take? Uh, you might mash this for like a minute, a minute and a half or so. You want to get the white of the onion to really bruise out, and it really turns into a nice oh, smooth paste, as you can see, okay. lining the bowl. And this is for garnish? No, this is actually the first step of the guacamole. Okay. So uh, then, of course, we have the avocado. So we cut these up. All right, I know we're looking for gnarly tomatoes. What are we looking for in an avocado? We want a bright, creamy green flesh that's going to be firm on the outside. And when you pop the nib, which is on the tip of the avocado, you can um, normally get an idea whether you're fresh or not because it'll have a little green tinge on the inside. Is that so? Yeah. yeah. Right, just looking. Okay. Great right. tip. So take your avocado, and then what we do is we do one, two, three nice cuts, and then we go across about four or five times, depending on the size of your avocado. Think tic-tac-toe. And then this would get spooned out mm -hmm. into our guacamole. Now for One sake avocado of, or a half hot? Well, we're actually gonna do two avocados. Two avocados. To an order. So this gets a little crowded in the, uh, in the <laughs> pan here. Beg your pardon. This is certainly a, a hands-on demonstration for somebody at home. This is, it really is, you, you're, you're getting involved with the food though. This is so, and probably oh, tastes yeah. a lot better than something that you would get store-bought. Oh, it's so fresh, yeah. You just, it, and it, it's really an authentic way to have uh, guacamole. Now, we double back over with our jalapenos. We like to, actually, before we do this. We have less than a minute here. We're gonna mash it? Yeah, we're gonna mash it. So, just to expedite, we do a little bit of salt and We'll add some jalapenos. More jalapenos. A little more fresh oh, onions. I'm digging it. And we're also gonna, well, we'll mash this up real fast. Just keep mashing right there, Patrick. Yep. This gets finished with some fresh herbs. And this is new on the menu. This is new on the menu, and it's extremely fresh and has been one of our biggest uh, hits of the new menu. Wonderful. Patrick, thank you so much. We're gonna keep on mashing, then we're gonna be eating.